In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the Palm House at Kew Gardens. I'm going to do two versions of this video, the exact same footage. One's going to have my commentary on, which I'm sure many people will find annoying. So I'm doing a second option, which will just have some light background music to it. And you won't have to listen to my voice. So look at the title of this video. If it's not the one you want, look for the other one. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so you're watching the video where you have a running commentary from yours truly. I've got several interesting facts to reel off throughout this video tour. Uh, and I'll start with um, just an introduction. So this is a very humid tropical or subtropical glass house featuring palms, mostly from the rainforest regions. This is the palm house. Um, so obviously the focus is on palm trees, but there's also many other species of exotic rainforest type plants. It's very hot in here, unsurprisingly. The minimum temperature is 18 degrees C, and that's maintained by a hot water heating supply underneath the paths. There's no way to limit the maximum temperature, but vents are opened above 28 degrees C just to take the edge off. There's certainly no air conditioning. The length of some of these palm tree leaves is astonishing. Meters long. I, I didn't bring a tape measure, but I'd estimate some might may be as long as eight meters. Um, absolutely incredible to see. Certainly not got anything like that in my garden. Relative humidity in here is kept above an uncomfortable 75%. And despite this, the, planter, the plants are still watered every single day. So this is a sable miner, which is an incredible plant. I've seen these in Florida um, and probably other places around the world as well. Unfortunately, we can't grow these in the UK. They need an awful lot of summer heat. So no point in taking any seeds from there. Now, someone is bound to call me out here and say, yes, I'm growing one in the UK. Um, I keep it indoors or I keep it in the green, heated greenhouse or um, something like that. What I mean is you can't grow them. You can't just buy one and plant it outside here in the UK. It needs an awful lot of heat, constant, consistent heat over many months um, to really get it growing. You could plant one here in the UK if you could get hold of one and watch it slowly die over many years. Um, but it's, it's not something that's a long-term prospect. Okay, time for another fact. Amazingly, this glass house was built over 170 years ago and took four years to construct. It contains 16,000 panels of glass. 16,000, that's incredible, isn't it? I hope they went to one of these companies that offers you buy one, you get one free. Each panel is cleaned inside and out once every two years. Look at the incredible roots on these plants. I've seen these before in Hawaii, I think it was, and they start meters up the trunk and head straight underground. There's one look on its way. It doesn't look white. I'd expect it to look a healthy root to look white. It's very difficult here to know which direction to look in. Instinctively, I want to look up at the 
crowns of the, the palms, which are meters in the air. But actually, there's even more low level planting to admire and labels to read um, at ground level, um, foliage everywhere. So um, <laughs> I don't know, just try and take your time. I've got the family waiting outside, so I'm feeling a bit of pressure to get through this, but if you could spend an hour here, maybe in the heat and humidity, that's asking a lot, but um, with a brief recovery outside, I think an hour would be um, what you would like to spend inside this glass house. At the ends or uh, the ends of every row or the corners, um, depending how you look at it, there are these benches with young juvenile palms, each labelled, and could spend a long time looking at each and every one of these. But for this tour, I'm just going to whiz through them. I'm not going into any detail. Just want to give you an overview of what's here, so that. If it's of interest to you, and if you're this, this far into the video, I suspect it is, then maybe it's worth coming down to Kew Gardens and having a look yourselves. Look at that angled trunk, and this uh, cycad, I believe. What a crown. Now I'm trying my very best to avoid videoing people, trying not to bother anyone, but look at the fantastic size of this leaf here, which is dangling tem temptingly over the pathway. I'm sure virtually everyone has touched this. Many people, as you can see, have taken photos against it, behind it. just so tactile look at the size of it versus my hand <laughs> I've, I've not got small hands but um it's it's an unbelievable size so if you're getting fed up of my dull set tones then please remember there is a second video it's exactly the same video footage it just doesn't have me rambling on. I won't be offended if you want to watch that one instead. Um, I'll set it to some calming music. Oh, we've got another dangler here, guys. In fact, another couple of danglers. And who doesn't love a good dangler? Okay, who's ready for another fact? Now, this glass house has been through two major restorations, once in the mid 1950s, so about 100 years after it was built, and again in the mid 1980s, only 30 years later. And at that time, it was actually completely dismantled before being put back together again. Now occasionally, well actually quite frequently in here, you come across a humongous palm tree and you just have to stop and stare. And beautiful slender trunk. And I actually had a look at the label. This is a Fiji fan palm, Latin name Pichardia. Pacifica, of course.
Now I've been in here 10 minutes, and so far I've noticed there are two types of people. There's the stoppers and starers, and the, the walk-on throughers. Uh, I'm gonna go with those terms, yeah, let's take with those. So the stoppers and starers, probably like you and I, I'll say I am under a bit of time pressure from the family waiting outside, but I would love to stop and, and admire and read about every single plant in here. And that's the majority of people. The majority of people in here, I'd say, are stoppers and starers. But of course, many people have paid an entrance fee to Kew Gardens. They have, you know, perhaps not got a, a huge interest in, in plants or palms or tropical plants. And they just want to have a quick look through. So. Um, there's a, an obvious way of telling the difference. One, the stops and starers, they walk at about 0 0.1 miles an hour. And the walk on throughers, they're, they're really motoring. They may slow down occasionally or to try and navigate through the, the stoppers and starers, but they're traveling at a much faster speed. Now, I don't think I've made it clear yet. This footage was filmed in August, 2021. It's now December, 2021, in case you haven't realized. And, or maybe you're watching this in the future. And if you are, hello, future person. And what's it like? There's more leaves here hanging in front of you across the pathway, which I love. I think that's great. I think it, it, it resembles a, a true jungle where you'd have to use your hands to move leaves out of the way to get to make your way through. Now, look at this fantastic palm. My goodness. The colour on this, this sort of lime green, is, um, I don't know, it's mesmerising. This is a, oh, here we go, Johannes de Simmania, something or other. So, sorry about that. But um, that is something I've never heard of, clearly. And it's just a thing of beauty, isn't it? Now, the footage won't do this justice. I'm, I'm sure of that. My goodness. Almost looks like something you'd find under the sea, or I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but. A bit different to everything else in here, that's for sure. I love looking up in here, looking at the canopy, the green canopy, full of different textures, different shades of green. Look at this fantastic plant with pink, I don't know, are these flowers? I guess they're flowers. Beautiful pink flowers. I'm going to have to have a look at what this is called. This is Red Hot Cat's Tail. And you know I don't do very well at pronouncing Latin names, so let's just call it Red Hot Cat's Tail. Yeah, I can see why it's called that. Incredibly, this glasshouse 
along with the surrounding outside beds, lawns, hedges, and the water lily house, are all maintained by just two full-time members of staff. That is incredible, isn't it? That, I mean, with weekends and bank holidays and um, holidays, that basically equates to about 10 hours of work per day, um, 365 days a year. That is um, quite something. Now, of course, there are um, temporary student staff and apprentices that, that help out, but it still is, uh, you know, I'd have expected it to, to have taken a lot more full-time staff than just two. So you can see I'm in the banana section here. And there are, as you've just seen, bunches of bananas hanging down from the banana plants. And that is bound to be a favourite of visitors. I don't know the actual height of the ceilings here, but I do know that several palms and bamboo canes as well over the years have had to be removed some before they've broken through the glass others after breaking through the glass overhead but quite incredible that they've reached such heights here in the uk So, we're coming to the end of this video now. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'd be really interested to hear how many people watch it, this video have actually walked around this amazing glass house in real life and who have only done so virtually. Now, I do say some really obvious things, but this one really does qualify me for an honorary degree in stating the bleeding obvious. But you really have to get down here or up here or across here and experience the heat the humidity but most importantly the palms to even come close to doing justice to this magnificent greenhouse thank you very much for watching if indeed you still are